All right. Just, just one? That's that's not nearly enough. No, you know what? I don't I don't know that I own one. I, I really well, that's go get yourself go get yourself a cotton t-shirt and get over here at like 3 30 and we'll okay. make you one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have one. So this is that is a problem. Okay. Um let's go ahead and start. Um, I don't know, Brian, if you want to take over, if you guys want me to take over, if you guys are going to go straight to Mark and start with the agenda, uh, entirely up to you guys. Yeah, why don't we why don't we quickly walk through legislation, right? And then once we get through that, then we can see what else we got to talk about. All right, give me a second to pull up my packet. Mm -hmm. Um, from what it looked like, because I looked at it this morning and for some reason closed it, all we have is confirming a police officer and giving ourselves permission to evaluate, um, do a permit appeals. And right. as I pull it up, yep, that's it is. We got a third reading on the... Uh, the police officer who is that Anthony Southerd and establishing our authority to make decisions. And it looks like the authority to make decisions still just a second reading. So okay. nothing real fancy for Monday. Very good. <clears throat> then uh, that sounds light and breezy. Then uh, where, where do we need to go from there? Where are we with our priorities? Where are we with anything? Tony, I, I feel like you are raring and ready. Well, I got, got stuff to go. I, you know, so, uh, I hope you guys have time because I think we could be here all morning. Oh, I I'm not going to let talk us... about, but I understand. <laughs> I, I say that in jest. Uh, I mean, where do you want, where do you guys want to start? At? Uh, okay, let me, let's back up. Let's back up to uh, passing the legislation by emergency last last time you know i'd like to know whose idea was that and explain to me why that was an emergency you know first off whose idea who decided that we needed to do this as an emergency well, well, Tony, what are we i think about? we're going to have to be more clear on that because uh, i personally we're talking about the legislation for garmin miller to go forward with the contract huh? I'm a, I want to know whose idea was it to pass that as an emergency? Uh, I'm I'm going to say it was mine. Your I feel idea? like it was my yeah. I feel like it was my idea, and I know I at least suggested it. Could you explain to me why? That's yeah, because question. because forward progress has to forward forwardly progress, and waiting another month to move forward doesn't make any sense so, to so me. So the answer is you know because I'm getting ready to start talking about this on Facebook. You guys have got me so fed up right now. I can't, I'm, I, I wonder what world you live in, okay? Let, uh, Tiffany, put your hand down, please, because it's going to take me a minute, okay? I, see Hughes, that, I, I know I you've got a lot to say. To so let me finish what I have to say about this. You know, <clears throat> just because we are in a hurry doesn't make it an emergency, okay? Now, so Jesse, I would like you to explain to me why we're in a hurry and that constitutes an emergency that takes away the right of referendum because we just approved to spend $116,000 and took away the right of referendum for the residents of the village. And if there's case law, I want to see it. So, sure, I'm, I'm happy to provide so, that to you. The reason we didn't have a problem with it was because the right of referendum expired at the first phase of this contract. So that is why there really there was no referendum remaining here after the second part. Okay, so this is where I respectfully disagree with you, Jesse, because the first decision that we made was to have them provide us with a price, and that's what they did. They pro provide and that they would move forward. So first time, and then the second time, it's not the same decision that's being made. I mean, I, I understand your point of view. I'm, I'm happy to provide you some case law on that. I'll, I'll get it drawn up for you. Uh, but that is, I mean, that is the first contract, the first phase of legislation. I don't have it in front of me, but that permitted both phases of it. And then it was just an appropriation here at the end here on the cost, on the final cost. 
But see, that's not, see, that's not an accurate description. And let me finish, let me finish, please. That's not an accurate description of the situation because, because once they come back and give us the price, then we have the opportunity of saying, do we want to go forward with them from this point on? That is part of that process. And, and so here's a, okay, we're going to move on unless anyone else, because I've heard what Jesse has to say about it. I don't think it's accurate and we'll, we'll move on. If anybody else has any, yeah, Mayor, what, what is it that you like? I, to add I, I think I just have a really quick question. I, I understand you're upset about it, but there are six council members that voted to pass this as an emergency. That was their choice. Um, well, right. I, did, yeah. I understand there were six council people that, that voted. And what I'm trying to point out well, is the, that. I, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, what I'm okay. trying to point out Tony, is that the no. five other members of council don't understand what we're doing. You know, they don't get Tony, it. Here, Tony, I, Tony I, I'm going to jump in right here, if okay. I may. Tony, okay. I, I will tell you that that um, charge, accusation, presumption on your part is incredibly I mean, rude. Even though we I, all... I, I could say that again? That what you said, to say that the other five count members of council didn't understand is incredibly rude because we all understood we all had a discussion about it beforehand as to exactly what it meant and why and then we voted so to then rail against the other members of your council to say that we don't understand is really not a reasonable nor nice thing to do i'm sorry but that's how i feel and, and well your your feelings are not facts and they're my opinion. Mean, they, they are okay. in fact your opinion and your opinion is neither accurate nor kind in your opinion thank you mm -hmm. I, I okay so that. brian that was all i was trying to point out i understand he's upset at the fact that this legislation passed but in in my understanding we're talking about something that happened in the past there are six members every person has their vote um it did not have to pass as an emergency and I would agree with you. Um, I, I think it's not cool to say you guys don't understand what you're doing. I think every person on there knows exactly what is trying to be accomplished and not agreeing doesn't mean that it's wrong. So, oh. right, or, and, and again, everybody has an opinion. Tony, I will, I will be the first to admit everybody has an opinion, but to, to rehash something that we passed and discussed three times in the past, um, I, I, you're more than welcome to do it. I just wanna uh, make just, sure that I'm clear on where everybody stands. Okay, exactly. because but like I, think, I said, this okay. it's an election year, guys. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it definitely is. So, um, but anyways, so here's where we go. Uh, so what, what's the next one? I think, are we done with that? Is everybody content with how that happened or Let's, why it happened? Fine by me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to, you know, I don't know if it's, let's go to communications communications committee, you know, because this is a, a reoccurring theme that I see from the village is that go to the web, if you want to find out what's going on, go to the website, figure it out. That's, you know, let's just take the facilities, for example, if you want to find out what's going on if, with the facilities, and this is what was in the, the newsletter, is that if you want to find out what's going on with facilities, click facilities and go there. Well, you know, I'm impressed with all the information that's on our website. There is a ton of information, but what I dare anybody to go to that website and figure out what the heck is going on with our facilities committee, our facilities building, because if, you know, there's a bunch of information about the facilities committee in there and everything that they did, but no one, how is anybody to understand that that really has nothing to do with what's going on? That was before, and now we're moved on to Garmin Miller. And, you know, so to imply that it's so simple just to go to the village or go to the website and figure out what's going on with anything in this village. I went to look for financials. Like I was told, oh, we just go to the website. It's, it's listed on there where I dare, I don't know how to figure, I can't figure out how to find it. I, I search web, uh, financials and then a resolution from 2015 comes up and there's just a whole list of stuff that I don't, I, you know, I, well, I can go through there and try to find, and I can find stuff, but I don't, 
think anybody in the village can figure out what's going on by going to the village website. I, I, but I will say there is so much information on there. There's tons of information. It's just how do you navigate that? Is in uh, that's a big problem. So you know, to, to and I really think that we need to make the website more user friendly. And this is what the communications committee needs to work on. And we need to have the communications committee uh, deciding what goes in the newsletter every month and not put that burden on the mayor. The and this is what I had envisioned from the very beginning when we talked about putting the communications committee together was one, how do we get information to the residents and what is going to be on the website and what is going to be in the newsletter. That's something that the communications committee needs to work on on a monthly basis instead of making the mayor do it all. You know, well, that's where I'm at with communications. Okay, so really quick, I'll just make a comment on that. Um, updating the website is a daily activity um, and usually multiple times a day. Um, I don't disagree with at all um, about having more interaction on the newsletter. I, I'm more, I, I would be thrilled with that. Diane has actually been working on a couple different things to have a quarterly insert, which would focus on one particular item, whether it be, this was discussed um, at the last meeting, I believe in, in an actual council meeting, but I thought it was a great idea. One quarter, we do like a half page or a page about the lakes or the facility building or whatever for a more in-depth conversation. So to me, that great, I think it would be fabulous. But as far as the website goes, I just wanna remind people that it, having a committee do it has to be somebody committed because um, if there's a road closure, this or that, we put that in the latest news. Um, to me, it's extremely user-friendly, but I'm on the website and I'm on the computer every single day. So, you know, we can agree to disagree. Short of going and, and to start with the first comment, and I will be the first to admit when the 2999 building went down, um, the lack of communication. Well, I don't know that there was a lack of communication. There was a lack of investigating on your own at this point. If there's a resident that is not aware of the fact that we are looking at a new facility building from everything that happened in 2999 um, to this point, uh, you know, it, you have to hold residents responsible to look for their own information. It's taken me two years, three years to actually get to that. And that's, Tony, I, you know what? I do um, raise my hand politely. I, I don't need the face remarks as well. Uh, well um, I'm trying to just raise my hand. I'm sorry. I know, but it, you're, you know, it, you just be professional. Um, I try and that's all I'm asking. So as far as that goes, you know, I feel like the communication committee is, is definitely moving forward and they're getting some of their information done. Um, I'm not gonna continue to ramble on this, but going short, uh, you know, everyone, we've had COVID, we haven't been able to do town halls. We're able to do different things like that, do it. Um, you know, I always invite council members to get involved and help with communication. But as far as that goes, every one of our meetings is on the website, you click on a link or you click on the audio, we're actually working on getting the audio and the video, like there is there is a lot that we are trying to get on there as well. Like you said, there is a lot of information. The only thing that we were able to do in 2020 was, was live stream videos, we did that. I don't know, you know, most people don't want you going door to door in the middle of COVID. So I'm not, other than spending money and doing mailers and doing flyers, I don't know what you're looking for for us to do, however, um, maybe Diane can schedule a community, community, or I'm sorry, communication committee meeting. Um, and if you want to go and talk about, you know, ideas that you have, I'm all for it. Nobody on this panel, especially I think the people that went through this the first time, wants to hide from this topic. So uh, just short of going door to door, I'm not sure. I am open for all suggestions of communications, all of them. And that's all I have to say about that. So let's... Well, can I hear what the rest of it? Okay, well, Mayor, David's I would definitely disagree that it's just the it, see, and this is where you keep you keep you know justifying my my uh, being upset is because you continue to say it's on the website, it's their fault for not looking into it. I'm telling you that you are too familiar with it, and it, you can go to the website and figure out what's going on. But I can tell you from that. It isn't as easy as you think it is. And I would like to hear what the rest of the council has to say about this. So, 
I was just trying yeah. to point out David's been raising his yeah. hand. Yeah, that, let's go to David, whose oh, hand is raised. Hand is raised. Oh, I... yeah, I use the yeah, I use the uh, the official Zoom one. Um, so I just wanted to say that you know I. I I totally understand. I can understand where Tony's coming from. Um, I, I agree that communication with our people is of absolute utmost importance. And if if we feel that the website is not as effective as it could be, then I mean, there, there's always room to improve things. So I guess my question, my question would be that um, you know, Council Benedetti has um, put obviously a lot of a lot of thought and mental energy into this um, about you know issues he perceives with the website so what would some solutions be i mean you know if we could get a communications committee meeting together um i'm sure there'd be plenty of people who could attend what um in, in your viewpoint tony what what do you see what changes would you see i suppose well what i would see is that okay there's so many things like there was no announcement we need to get together and decide what's going to be in the newsletter. That's number one, because I, you know I don't mind it being called the mayor's report, you know. But this is an issue I have from the past: is that was the it was the village according to the mayor, and what's going on according to the mayor. It really should be a a, a group effort to decide what we put in there, what we want to tell them about, and that's one side. There's, it's a two pronged thing: deciding what information we want to present to the residents and and leaving that up to the mayor and is it just it doesn't work it's not working tony, tony can i ask you a question uh -huh. how many how many articles have you written for the newsletter <laughs> i haven't written a single one do you want me okay to well, hold on hold on okay let me hold on hold on i'm asking okay. you some questions right? right so here you are saying that you have strong opinions on what should be in the newsletter and yet you know, this making 24 plus another, so 36 plus eight. I don't know. I've been on council about 40 months total throughout my career as being on council. And there has not been a month of those that I haven't been asked for an article. And I know the same with you. So if you haven't written any and you have uh, concerns about what's in it, go write yourself an article. Hey, Nobody's not going to publish your article. Me. Okay. So this is the issue is that I don't want it to be the view of one individual council. I, what, what I think should happen doesn't matter. It's what this group of six of us want to decide. So there shouldn't be an article necessarily authored by one individual's viewpoint because you want me to put a safety article together? I can yeah. start writing about how I think our police practices fall into racial profiling. You know, is that what you want me to put on uh, in our newsletter? If that's what you think, and you feel but that's I don't think it should be allowed to do that. I think it should be the group that decides what content is. Yeah, I. This, this is a, it's a perfect example. Uh, I will also I don't tell you, think I should be able to a council person should be able to put you. his personal views as the as representing the groups. And that's why this needs to be done by the committee. The committee right. decides what goes into the yeah. newsletter, not Never. an individual, not the mayor or not one individual council person. In, in my recollection, and the communications committee goes back prior to your tenure on council, Tony. I uh, think that's true. It is. We, we had stood it up during my last couple of months. We had exactly one meeting before before it all ended, but so there, there was a meeting before. Oh. Yeah, but there was a communications committee beforehand. It had an intent beforehand, and never, in all of the time of its existence, was curating the village newsletter the uh, the uh, uh, intent of that committee. It was never an editorial board. Okay, well, we're we're talking about the communications committee today. Okay, right, well. So then we should go to the communications committee and, and have the communications committee take that up as, is that their purpose? Fine. You know, let's move forward because communications sucks as hard today as it did when I first got involved. And if not worse. I, I have a feeling that 
communication is always going to suck because it's never enough. Wow. Right. But we can make, we can move. We, we can make it better. And, and I would ask you if you think that the actions you are taking at this moment are making it better. But Councilperson Brueger has his hand up. So you asked for our opinion. Oh, am I, yep, I'm on mute. Um, and so I checked out the website to, to see uh, what you were talking about. And I went to departments, clicked on public works, clicked on facilities, and have 2021 continue building renovation information, including a copy of Garmin Miller's bid and proposal, a map, everything. And it took me three clicks. I don't mm -hmm. understand your comment that our website is too hard to navigate because it's not. If people can't you know, figure, I understand some people have problems with technology and that might be true of some of our residents. We have a lot of older residents who didn't grow up in the information age but uh, I don't think it's accurate to say it's too hard to find that information. I, I, no, I, I believe I started off by saying that there is a ton of information on there. I, I don't, you know, I found the information. You know, I did, I, well, I'm not that illiterate that I did exactly what you did and got to where you're at. But what I don't, it's to me, here's my analogy. It's like saying, I got you a bicycle. Okay, here's all the parts of that bicycle, but I'm not going to give you any instructions. And that's the way I look at this whole situation with the facilities building is that there is a ton of information there, but I don't know what, what is the relevance of the Garmin Miller proposal as opposed, you know, so this is where I think we are, you know, I, I know we all can go through it and understand what's going on. But to imply that the residents of the village have any clue as to what's going on with facilities, be, you know, at what we've been told this whole year, look it up on the website. Look it up on the website. You know, so go, I mean, I hear what you're saying. There's a bunch of information out there, more than we've ever had. From that standpoint, our website is great. It's just understanding. It's the same thing with if you go and look for financials. All the information, I'm sure it's there, but I can't figure out how to find it. It's three clicks. I'm looking for something specific. It, it falls. It falls under the same full workflow that the you can make someone lead like, them to the you, trough, you, but you, you can't make them drink. <laughs> well, again, it, to get to the financials, you click on that same department's link. You click on finance, and off to the right, there's a link that's for monthly financials and another one for the five-year forecast. Well, Both so of those are three clicks away. Well, I wasn't. I don't know. Now, that. it sounds to me like what you what you're asking for is not just the information, but interpretation of the information. That you want an article for each one of these documents saying, "Here's the Garmin Miller bid, and here's what it means, and here's what we thought." That's exactly what and, I think we should do. Uh, yeah. Well, we should, that should be in the next newsletter. Then, is then the Tony, residents then Tony, know that this Tony, we've decided what the floor plan. Well, well, let's then, get into. Then, then Tony, go ahead. Floor. Go ahead and write them. Right. That's the thing. Right. We are all busy people. We all have lives to live. So it's and... <laughs> now I see that's your opinion. Thank you. But... <laughs> if, well, you know, I, I, who, I, whose job I've always... is it then? if you're not volunteering to do this work that you think needs done, who are you volunteering to do that? All of us. He wants all of us to do it. That's what he said. He wants us all to get into a room together and write you, it together. You know what? I do a lot of work with respect to streets. You know, I'm out, out, you know, climbing into, don't into you don't, Tony, I, you know, don't tell me about flipping. Nobody said you don't do a lot, Tony. Who, who do you want doing this? That was just my question. Communications committee. All right. Well, Diane, you're the communications committee chair. What do you, what do you think about that? Hmm. Well, I, I think that, uh, I, <laughs> I'm certainly a fan of communications and uh, a person can't communicate enough um, on the one hand. And so you have to, because you can't, you can communicate, well, uh, let's see, Mark's a teacher. So you, you say the same thing to 10 people and your mouth moves and the words come out. It's 10 kids and, and how many are gonna get it on the first try? You know, eight out of 10, five out of 10. So. You know, communications is 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 difficult, but challenging. I should say challenging. So, in terms of the um, 
the website. Um, I'm remiss on that because I was going to hand out an assignment to have uh, the committee go through and try to uh, audit the website and the and, and so I'm still going to do that, but I should have gotten a, my committee members a list of things to to check out. So that's me. That's on me. But I'm going to do that still. And uh, the other thing is, is regarding the facility. You know that all with all those. You know I communicated on the on my effort to do the facility. I communicated my ass off. Excuse me to do that. So, uh, you know, but the thing is, is, is and, and in fact, I, I enjoy doing it, but uh, with this facility, with this effort being through, you know, we've been participating, but really the administration has been driving it. Uh, you know, that's, I feel like a little awkward being one council member communicate, I, I just don't feel like, I feel like that would have to be a, a, a total group effort in order to make, so it wouldn't appear as if I'm the one uh, pushing communication on something that is being worked on uh, as, as, as a, a village uh, administration or so a village uh, government entity. So um, I'm a little puzzled as to especially since I don't necessarily, you know, my own personal council opinion is not necessarily the direction that, that the village is going. Um, so that's a little awkward. So, um, but it is time, it's, it's, it's time for us to, you know, have the, give the information out there now that this is all uh, voted on. I don't know if the contract is, I don't know if the, this latest contract has been settled and signed yet, but at, but it's time to then to communicate where, uh, I believe it is time to do a more in-depth communication to everyone in the village via a couple of different ways. It could be via Facebook, certainly via the extra page, uh, at that extra page uh, for the, um, the newsletter. Um, and um, I, I intended to talk to uh, the mayor about that so we can get that extra page done and um, have at least part of it, the, the front part of it, um, more in depth on the facility and where we are right now. Uh, so that's for that. And um, let's see. And as far as what goes on, the first page is very, you can only put so much on one page. So the, the village uh, pay, uh, section of the newsletter is one page. And once you do, now this time we'll have a little extra space because we only have two legislation items. So that's gonna leave more space. Um, if we want if we want to use the work session, I'm great. If we wanna use 15 minutes in the work session every month to have the mayor uh, and then say what she's gonna put in the newsletter, just the topics, and then go around the room and see what else council members think should be topics for the mayor and the newsletter. If we want to make that an exercise, we do once a month. I think that's fine. I think that's, that'd be great because maybe the mayor is not uh, highlighting something that you think should be highlighted. So um, I, I, I think that's fine. I don't think that should just be the communication committee. I think that should be an exercise for Saturday work session. And the timing of that is pretty good because of when the newsletter needs to be in. Um, so I, I like I like that idea if people are willing to do that. I think we can do that from, from this point forward, part of our work session then. Okay, all right. Well, that's am, why, you know, I guess I'm as much a blame for this because I hadn't really, you know, I've always thought I, that's not anything I have to worry about. So I didn't think about it. But now that I realize that I better start thinking about what goes out in the newsletter because somebody isn't, putting everything in there. It's like the, the, the election coming up. There's been nothing put in the newsletter. Oh, no, no, that's not true. Where? So people say that all the time to me. You know, I, I put things that there's things in the newsletter and people say, well, I never saw it. It's like, it's, it's amusing. It's not, it's just amusing. Well, let me tell I have you. to smile because everybody does it. And I think, you know, where am I? And I, you know, as, an, as, a, as the editor, I'm thinking, well, maybe I put it in the wrong spot on the newsletter that they just didn't look at it. Uh, you know, what can I, else can I do? But yeah, I did I did earlier, uh, couple, 
three months ago, whenever I did the whole thing on that, the four council positions being open. And you should when was it that. in? What, what newsletter was it in? I have to what go month? back and look. It was a couple months ago. Oh, and this is my this is my point about mm -hmm. what's the news Diane saying. that if she says she put it in there, she put it in there. I don't think she's making it up. I don't okay. think oh, what I'm remembering the exact can I, one is fine by me. But what I'm trying to say, what I want to say is that it should have been in a big just like we got national night out is half the page. It was you know, a good portion of the page. It wasn't a small article. Well, okay, I guess I'm ranting about nothing. Okay, so you know, oh, hold the only on, hold on, just ahead, just ahead. for uh, neatness and completeness, I have I I have the article right here. It is in the which newsletter? Let's scroll down. Oh, I yeah. see. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, that yeah, was... there's the article. Looks like this was the. Let's count. Are you ready to serve? Huh? Yeah. April. And it's, you know, I would say that that's about a third of the page. Rough well, estimate. I, I, I can also say that. that I'm sure. What month was that? April. Well, you know, the month April is on April. the last page. Okay. Yeah, it was April. It was April because it April. had April food truck listings on it, mm -hmm. is, is what I'm assuming. Well, as long as we can agree to uh, start talking about what goes in the newsletter, I think we can move forward from that. Sure. Time. I will add it as a, uh, a regular item for the for the Saturday morning work session. Awesome. Look at we'll that. At the end today, then, I guess. Huh? <laughs> no, <that's, laughs> we'll do that in here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I already heard you uh, once on it, Tony. You you want to go back to the floor plan of, of the building? Yeah, that'd be a great one. Sure. Uh, I guess I, what I'm trying to understand is who is working on, because are, are there going to be any changes to the plan that we saw, like with regards to bathrooms and, you know, that kind of stuff? Who's working on that? And you know, what changes are being made, if any? Can we get it, maybe an update on that? I'm gonna give a quick update and then maybe if Eric wants to chime in, we've not even done our kickoff meeting with them. Um, we've just signed the contract. We will be meeting with Garmin Miller, I believe next week, um, or at least setting up for staff to being able to sit down with them. Exactly what that is going to entail. We haven't had it yet. So as soon as well, we sit down and meet with them, I will let you guys know. Well, who's who's deciding what it's going to entail? So, so now it's it's an administrative function, all right. And so it'll be professionals on the architecture side, along with staff and along with the mayor, and it'll be administratively guided. Jesse obviously be involved because we're going to move towards getting plans finalized. And yes, we're going to obviously bring forward all the changes that were already discussed and concerned with the restrooms, amongst other items on the floor plan. And that'll move towards, you know, a bid. It's going to take a little while. And uh, as the mayor stated, she will keep people informed. Well, this is where I'd like to state that I, I think uh, somebody other than the mayor and Eric. And OK, so it's going to be the mayor, Eric and Jesse. Those yeah. are the three people involved. Who else? No, there's chief. There's okay, other the chief. people on staff. I mean, okay, this, is, this okay. isn't but, but but the architects and the engineers and our engineer will be involved, too. So. You want everybody oh, involved, what, they're involved. Let's back up. When is it? When is the engineer getting involved in the floor plan? That's what I'm talking about here. Oh my goodness. Th th this is a whole process of putting a building on a site and there are going to be multiple professionals at multiple levels who are going to be involved. Okay. It's, and I it's get not that. your show. So far, it's not so your show. Far, what was that? All right. So it, Tony, I guess, I guess I'm not understanding. Can you, can you express a, a specific concern? Because I'm not understanding your specific concern? My specific concern is that the only representation this building is getting as to the needs and the direct, this, the whole floor plan has been what the mayor, Eric, mayor and Eric, I mean, in the staff, you got those, all the people, the staff that has been involved in this, but there is no consideration from what the community's looking for. And that's what I don't think you guys are getting 
at so, all. Is it so, absolutely been represented? It's not being represented in this process. It, Again, it's not I a, want to get clear because this is where I'm going to start posting stuff on Facebook. You post all you want. It's your free. It's your free amendment right. You go ahead. Uh, okay, okay, but I'm trying to so, get all the information. So right now, right. So, this, Tony, this plan has been put together by the mayor and Eric. And okay, incorrect. There, there's these so, people called architects, or, and those wait, are the guys who are. Eric, if I may let, let me let me let me let me ask uh, Tony some questions. So, Tony, what I believe I'm hearing you say is that you don't feel that the mayor represents the community, and that the mayor does not uh, put forth the needs of the community. Is not putting forth the needs of this community in in her efforts in in driving this. Uh, building renovation is that what you're saying that's what i'm saying okay can you uh can you provide an example to bolster that position because i disagree with you <laughs> you know here's my here's my take on this is that beth mcfarland is an architect and she has raised many concerns about this floor plan of which i agree with her and there is no representation, you know, I, I, I'll do respect, Eric, you're not an architect. There's no one involved in this process to look at the technical details of this floor plan. And that's where I think we're screwing up. That's what I'm gonna be saying. So who's Garmin Miller? I'm confused by that I'm statement. I'm totally confused. I was trying to figure out who Garmin Miller was too, that has sat yeah, down. I, I don't understand at all what Tony's saying. Tony, I'm gonna make a couple of real quick comments. Um, we are dealing with Garmin Miller in which council approved the contract. They are our architects. Beth McFarlane is amazing, don't get me wrong. However, some of the plans that she brought to us was much more expensive. We've already gone over this. We can do what Beth put in a diagram, but it's going to cost us more and Kim has already told us we can't do it. I'm not going to sit here and Who do this. For the next cost more? Tony, I'm in the middle of a sentence and you have done that to me and I apologize to you. So all I'm going to say is this has been the Tony show for almost an hour now, 40 minutes. Get used to it. And that's fine. But these are things that have already passed at this point. So admin is currently working on all of the, uh, the entire process. Garmin Miller is the architect that we've used. You are always going to have people that have great ideas, great recommendations, but we've already gone down that road knowing that things are going to be more expensive. At the end of the day, if this ends up being more expensive and this isn't what, you know, this is what everybody wants to do and you guys want to spend more money, we'll look into it. But as it sits right now, we are in the middle of a process that council approved to move forward with Garmin Miller. And I'm not going to sit here and defend myself whether or not I know what I'm doing and not doing. That's what we have professionals for. Diane has her hand up and I I'm just not gonna sit here and argue about the exact same things for two hours. Yeah. Go ahead, Diane. Okay, uh, what I'd like to su suggest moving a little further, kicking the ball down the road is, is at some point in this meeting with, uh, in this kickoff meeting with Garmin Miller, what I'd like to suggest is ask them as, at what point we, if we can do early on in their process of, of finalizing the design, uh, at some point, everybody's going to feel pretty good about it. I'd like to then uh, have um, the ability to, have, to invite people to the uh, community Mr. center Mr. and show the we're interested talk about it and share their talk thoughts uh, uh about it so it would be somewhere like i said not too late to because someone might come up with something that's like oh my gosh why didn't we think of that that is possible so uh but but not so not so far down the road that a tweak a tweak couldn't be made I'm not saying a complete overhaul, which we couldn't be made. That would be beneficial. Uh, so I think we ought to, I would really, really, really like to see us uh, offer that opportunity to our residents. That's so, something that I was going to address as well. I would like to see there, you know, be a, a stage of public input where we've got, you know, images and, you know, projections and things like that of what things will look like. 
for the community to input on. I, I completely agree with Diane there. There's no reason we should be secretive. So, okay, let's, let's talk about that pathway real quick for everyone. So, so typically speaking, the novelettes and the meetings and the planning and the community input go in to everything, which in this particular case, we had a couple of years of this and Diane, you were at the forefront of, of that facilities committee, which I think overall was very well done and very community oriented and got a lot of input, you know, and, and that's all been taken into account at this point. Now, let's say we, we want to go down the pathway of reopening it up for that. So what's going to happen is there's going to be an additional money because Eric, the architect. Please, stop. please, please, please. I, I'm speaking. Stop, stop. I, I'm sorry, but that, you're going backwards. Option. You're not understanding what I said. No, I, I'm not. You're not please. understanding what I Go said. Go ahead. I am not saying that we, I, I'm not saying that what I did was, you know, when we, we showed the different buildings, we asked people to vote and give their feedback on, on that. I'm not, we're not asking people, we're past that. We're not asking people to vote. We're asking people to, we're sharing what the, we're sharing a progress report. And I know you're, I know a lot of people are, are petrified with, you know, like dealing with residents who might disagree. That's but not I, I think it's really important to show progress and allow people to share their thoughts about that progress, not to change the design, not to vote on the design because it's already, let's, it's already uh, half baked and it's going to, we're finished baking it at this okay. point. So, so that's, that's where we're at. And so, so please don't tell me that, uh, you know, we're not going to do this until it's, it's all oh till the no, very, I, I understand. Very end if you just process. want us to, if you want us to have a public meeting of some type or like a little show and tell, then I, I think that's perfectly fine. It's just that if, if people have a good, I just want to point out, it doesn't. What is think about what the purpose at the end of the day? Is. So let's say everybody shows up and, and you've got a, a, a maybe it's a vocal minority, maybe it's everybody in the village. It doesn't matter. So people show up and they say, oh. Well, we need we need a parapet. We we need to change this. So and everybody's like, yeah, let's do that. Great. Okay. So we go back, you got to go back to the drawing board. You pause it up. Now you're going to pause it up 30 to 60 additional days. You're going to add a parapet. You're going to change it around. You're going to increase your costs. You're going to, add, and because the architects have to redo all of those, those renderings and stuff to get it back in front of people. So that's fine. We can give people a progress report. If the end result is just to get a progress report, wonderful. That's, that's great. If the council wants us to do that, that's great. If the council then wants us to make changes, I just want everyone to be clearly aware at that stage that we're at, it's going to cost more time and more money definitively that's why i think we are we're jumping the gun here there's no you know i know we need to get the building done as quickly as possible but with the, i think what like i think diane's saying and eric together is that the, the decision's already been made so as to what the floor plan is going to be so why mm -hmm. have a discussion with the residents because they can put their input isn't going to be acted upon you know that's why i think this is backwards we need to start letting the residents know this is the floor plan now guys all this talk before has been leading up to this point now this is where we're at this is the floor plan what do you guys think and i know that's going to take more time and you guys hate it to, that it's going to take more time, but that's the way this process on, should be going. Hold on, sorry. Let me let me ask a, again a clarifying question, right? Because I think we just heard a, and understand that we can show the floor plan. We can say this is the floor plan, right? And you can ask people what they think. That's fine, but we need to know that at this stage of the game, anything beyond a very minor tweak is an expensive change. So if your intention is to ask, what do you think will make it just the way you want it? That's not where we are in this, right? This is a, what do you think? Get used to it because this is largely what it's going to be. Yeah. We're definitely going to be making changes, you know, minor changes to floor plans, but the building envelope for the most part is set. Any major changes to the building envelope location will cost more time and money. And we've already determined which, which floor plans and which envelopes for the building are more expensive and less expensive. And that's what led to the process where we're at. If the intent is to just keep delaying and delaying and delaying for what council Benedetti is saying, then sure, we'll, we'll never have a building. And that's, that's, if that's what the process is going to be ever.
Well, well, th to me, like I've said before, what you're not recognizing is that the residents haven't been involved and this is heading to another referendum. The residents have definitely been involved and you go ahead and try a referendum. I mean, see what happens. So, Spend your money. Tony, can't wait. Tony, hold on, hold on. Tony, are you a resident of the village? Yeah. Have you been involved? Yeah. Okay, are the other members of council uh, members of the community? Oh, Last time pass, I checked. Can we get past this? Are, right, are you, are we all involved? So the community has been involved. Five members. Right? So, 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 so hold on, Tony. You know, not everything is one one sentence and then yell, right? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm walking I'm through a a uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? A I'm sorry. A, you know, a, a a process of thought, right? So so we have residents involved, right? we have representative rep residents involved because everybody here is a representative of the community, right? So my question is how much community involvement is going to be enough? At what point have we, can we put a flag in and say, this okay. is our goalpost and this is where it'll be enough. Because, <laughs> because unless, unless you have everybody holding hands together and saying yes at the same time, you'll never have you know, full community buy-in. They'll I, always I, be naysayers. You know, the reason I believe that I'm on the right track here is because information is not, whether it's been provided or not, the, the residents of this village have no idea where we're at right now. They haven't been involved. They, okay, they, have, they haven't been involved once we've just said, this is what we're going forward with. And then, and then there's no involvement from the village after that. You know, okay, I, so I'm sorry that I can't get, you know, I would say that the last council that you were on, Brian, was mm -hmm. representative of the village and they decided mm -hmm. to do the 2999 building and the residents didn't like it. So yeah, I, you guys had it all, thought you had it all figured out. But the well, when some I, residents were asked, they did I'll, were in favor. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I still think that was a, a, a good route to go. Um, just because well, people didn't like it, I, you know, there's a whole lot to unpack in that. And someday you and I can have a, a beer and I'll tell you what I really think happened there. But sure. uh, yeah, but you didn't answer my question. Where's the goalpost then? How much community involvement is the right amount for you to be comfortable? I don't, I would say that to, to a certain degree, the residents are gonna be the one to decide that whether they've been involved or not. I, at this point, they haven't been told right now, this is the, the main point that I'm trying to get through, is the residents don't understand that we've decided what the floor plan is going to be. And basically, it's, oh, you know, we're moving forward from this point forward without any of your input. I'd just like to make one comment. Don't use that residents don't know because there are a lot of residents that are fully aware of the floor plan that are fully aware of Garmin Miller and that are fully aware and stay on top of it. So don't say that the residents don't know that there are many residents that are fully informed, fully aware and know where to get the information. Yeah, they I'm watch the me. videos every single week. Um, so to imply that people don't know, there are people that do not want to be as involved and watch videos and follow the information. Um, but like you said, the information is out there. There are live streamed videos that are two, two hours, six hours a month that we discuss these types of things. Um, there will always be people that do not know what's going on. And that you I don't think any one of us can say with any certainty how many people know what. I mean, that's a guess. I, you can say that about the but I mean, No one in this meeting is saying that except for you. You are the okay. only one who okay. are making declarative statements of what people do or do not know. Well, so you're correct. No one can do that. So please stop doing that. Well, okay. I'll, I guess I'll premise that it. it's my, my conversations with the people that I talk to in the village don't understand what the hell is there going are 2, on. There 2,000 people in the village. How many do you talk to on a regular basis? I talk to as many as I can. My neighbors, I, I guarantee it's more than you guys. I got people reaching out to me about fence permits. Okay. So and Tony, you guys, don't, you guys don't have a clue. I've been talking you, to residents for 13 years. You think I you are telling me 
They don't you know think, what the heck the residents of the village are thinking because you think you are unique in this. You talk to feel a certain way or another. Tony, you think you are unique in this. You are not the only one who gets people calling them about fence permits oh, or street move signs on. Let's move on. or, you know, that I don't have a playground across the street from me that I go and talk to people there all the time or that I don't have, you know, neighbors that I am friendly with on my deck and we have when you know it's been a while since because of covid but you know to have 10 residents up there at a clip is not unusual so you're not the only person here talking to neighbors and residents well then i, but what you're I here think now but i think it all wraps back to right you are trying to aim for something that we can't define right you said the you know I, you, I, we I, don't know I, how I, many I, residents I, know what's going on so I, we should we can set a definition of how many residents, you know, affirming knowing what's going on is enough, right? If you can't measure the goal, if you can't define the goal, you can't measure the goal, you can never hit the goal. So let's see how we ever know how, how much information is enough. So, okay, I'm done with this topic. Okay, All right. so, so real quick, does anybody have anything that we've discussed at this point? Any well, problems, questions, or are we just going to go back to Tony and start the next issue? Well, he's the one who's got the long list today. My go-to is always the items. community garden this summer. That's that's where I meet people. So I recommend the community garden if anyone wants to run into more <laughs> constituents. Great idea, David. That, yeah. that many people love the garden. Yep, that's where they can find me. Okay. okay. Well, can I get a garden plot next year and you just garden for me? <laughs> sure. Me and the wife are having a great I time. Kill everything. I, I, it's great in theory, but I know I couldn't do it. So, yeah, me and the wife are having a great time out there. That's so, awesome. I know a lot of people love it. So, it, you guys need to make it bigger because we had people that were reaching out that were trying to get plots and weren't able to get them just as a plug. So, maybe they can get some more space. I will talk to them at the next MPCA meeting um, on the 14th, see what we can do yes. about that. And I know Lisa knows because somebody had reached out to her and they were all sold out. And I think it's just going to continue to grow because of <laughs> continue to grow. Um, or that was pretty cute, wasn't it? Um, okay, so where are we at? Well, you do you have uh, items that you sounds like Ma is, uh, we have a couple Mayor things. Hughes. Yeah, why don't we why don't we go on to what the administration is bringing uh, for awareness or action? Sure, uh, I'll start off with um, some some positive news. So all of you know that the um, the house that went to auction there on Lakeland Court. Um, with that small plot, you know, was bought by uh, a couple uh, from, uh, I met them the other day on site uh, from Oregon. They have uh, gutted most of the house, are doing great things over there and are going to be in front of P&Z and then council for a bunch of variances. It's a very small lot. So they're doing some major planning and we'll have that all presented to probably P&Z. Probably I would guess they'll be in front of them by August of, to September range by the time they get all their plans laid out and everything. So it's good things. And I think everybody will like that they're improving the community and continuing to basically turn what was once a long-term eyesore into something very positive. So okay. uh, other thing, uh, and I think Mayor, I'll let you jump, jump back to you, but this involves the uh, $3,000 rule. So we've done a good amount of research uh, internally between and it's, mo it's not me, I'm just speaking on behalf because I've been in the discussions, but mostly it's been uh, between Kim and Leah and Jesse um, who've done a lot of research, but we, we've been talking about this for a little while because where this came from was some years back. And I remember that the former mayor was discussing this too, but it's never been able to be clearly pinpointed. And I can say that there's no, in, I'll let Jesse and the mayor opine on this, um, but we've all done research, Jesse especially, and there's no resolution or ordinance that speaks to, or even policy, and Kim had looked into that, it speaks to a $3,000 rule. So we, we believe, we believe that what, where this comes from is that there is a $3,000 rule from the auditor from state, state code that requires that any then and nows, any then and nows that are goofed up, you know, basically that's a goof up, you know, anything 3000 or above has to come back to the council, the municipal council for approval. That is a state law rule, right? So essentially the way normal municipal business works is that council appropriates money to a fund, right? And the administration, city manager, whoever it is, then 
utilizes and encumbers a, a, a PO per policy, right? So policies can be set, you know, whether it's, you know, if you're over your $50,000 rule, you've got to have three bids. If you're between 10 and 50,000, you've got to have three quotes, right? So there are different policies for different municipalities, but based on those policies, a PO is encumbered on that particular line item. And then it's spent on what uh, the council's intent was, whether it was through the budget situation or it was for an appropriation in any current fiscal year. Um, and that's, that's what we've discovered, so. So Eric, you pretty much answered, said everything that I was gonna say. We had that, okay. this came up, Brian, just from last week where we talked about the 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. Um, that is something in the past that we have all like, this went back to Gene um, and some previous emails that I told you that I had found that was, you know, they went back and forth. Um, so really this is just an open topic for people to, or not. I mean, I, I don't know if Jesse wants to chime in, um, but to where all of council is on the same page as to what the role is, what the, what the $3,000 comes from, when it needs to be done, what I actually have authorization to do legally, or what council wants um, me to have authorization to do in the event that they want to stop certain things. I mean, I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, because I know I do so much, you know, writing ten thousand dollars checks for everything. Um, but anyways, no, I mean it's it's a more it's more about the comments that were made in the last meeting. I think it's something that you know sometimes we say things in meetings and then you know people hear that and then they think that. But how did that actually come about, or is that really what it is? So this was again brought up last week um, when we were talking about it. But we have actually not been able to find any at all. Um, there is no ORC, there is no um, ordinance resolution or anything. Once the money is appropriated, this does not mean I can just go write a $25,000 check out of something that's not been appropriated. Um, but if the money, for example, um, I'm, oh, I, I don't, I'm trying to think of something. So a shelter, as an example, Mayor, is a good one. Yeah, so the, the money's been appropriated for a shelter. If the shelter was, I'm going to use a, a smaller number, um, if the shelter was under $50,000 to have a shelter built, the money's already been appropriated. I don't really, if it's not a contract or anything, I don't need to come to you guys to get approval to build a shelter. It's already been appropriated for parkland funds. Use. So yeah. it's already been appropriated for use. Now, am I saying that I would do that without um, at least a yay or nay, whether or not we're going to move forward or planning and zoning? So really, this is a topic to be brought back up to you guys, because at this point, I think a lot of people are focused on a $3,000 limit, but technically, I can get things done. If there's a sewer repair that's $5,000, I don't have to bring that back to you guys, even though technically, I think people think over $3,000, I do. Um, once the money's appropriated, I really don't believe um, that I have to come back to you, whether it's $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. I don't know what your guys' feelings are towards it if there's something you guys want to actually put into place. And again, this is something that um, maybe it was a Lynn policy. Maybe it was just something she did. But again, what deciphers between if there's a $3,500 sewer repair that needs done, it needs done. Um, and I believe that's why I was put in a position to do something like that, to make those decisions. So I'm not gonna keep rambling because th that's where we are. There really is not a $3,000 rule. It sounds to me like from, from the information shared, what we don't have is the policy, right? So ORC right. Doesn't, doesn't have that, but you know, so I will take that as a takeaway to discuss uh, for a policy regarding these things in the next finance committee meeting. Correct. And that was that, I mean, yes, I think that would be great to take that up in there yeah. and you know, that way we can continue to do our research. And, mm -hmm. and that's just been a topic that I know for years people have talked about. So mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's something to finally get off our books and put something in our books or make sure that everybody has an actual legal understanding of what, because again, I don't want to do <laughs> clearly, I don't want to do something that I'm not supposed to be doing and vice versa. You guys don't want me doing something and telling me it's okay to do it if it's not okay to do it. Can I ask, uh, do we use the then and now purchase orders process or whatever you call that? So we I mean, do I never understood what those things were completely. And I mean, do we still use them? Yeah. So, so essentially it's what happens if 
somebody goes out, screws up, like let's say I use a credit card and I go buy something for, uh, it could be a, who knows, $500 uh, thing, right? So typically that's that's a no-no, right? So I went and maybe there's an emergency justification because usually again, there's policies that deal with things like that. Like, like if we had a major problem and needed a tool to fix a sewer leak and we went out and spent $600 on it, it's completely justifiable under, under whatever policy is necessary and no one's gonna complain that we stop water from leaking in the street, right? Whatever it is. But let's say, you know, and it's, it's happening. I'll, I'll admit that I've done this in, in, you know, my younger days when I'm trying to get a project done that I spent, you know, money on a, on a piece of a computer equipment and that added up to maybe four grand and we, we had it budgeted, right? It was intended. Um, I ordered it, it was delivered, we installed it. We're like, oh shoot, forgot to, fit, to fix the in, issue of the PO. So I get yelled at by the finance director and then we have to take a, a PO, you know, the PO gets written out and council's got to approve it. If they don't approve it, I can be in more trouble, right? So in that case, the council approves it and everything's fine and dandy and I just get a slappy for that one. But that's that's typically why the policies are there to keep you from getting, you know, in more trouble or to keep employees from, you know, making bigger errors. So, so it's so, used, when, it's used when, when you spend money that wasn't appropriated? It's no, it's, it's when you, you that, that can also be, that can get you in more trouble, but typically let's say the money is appropriated. So let's say I got 50,000 in my IT budget, because this is a real example from my past. And I ordered a bunch of stuff. I forgot, right. To fill out a PO properly, to have it approved. The finance director has the authority to sign off on those. And she would have, except I failed to submit the proper paperwork to back me up as required by the auditor and all that good stuff. Right. So now at that point, we're over 3,000. It's got to go back to council for them to approve that, right? Otherwise, I can personally, as the employee, fall into more problematic issues, right? And so can the village or, or city, for that matter. So it's there oh. just to make sure that we follow rule sets. So laws. what happens, like, here's a great example. If I have something that I need done, um, a plumbing issue, I go down to Kim or Leah, sorry. It's Leah now. Um, I go to Leah and I say, I need $600 to fix X and it's a plumbing thing, whatever. And I tell her who the contractor is. We do what's, we do an actual PO. It could be an electrical issue. It could be whatever. Um, and she will actually do a purchase order for the, whatever the quote is um, to get that done. And I do that 99% of the time. I do that before the work is done. Um, in an emergency situation, um, we had uh, we had flow line have to come out and clean some things. It just has to be done. So there are certain times that it's there's more of like what's called a blanket PO, um, and that's something that you know we we can get sewer work and things like that done. Yeah, as well. okay. So, but in anytime I have some PO. sort of. Yeah, anytime that we have some like plumbing issue or whatever, and it's a con, you know, it's not, it's it's just a contractor that's coming out to do it. I go I, the way this process works for me is I before I do anything, I walk downstairs and say, "Do we have six hundred dollars to do this?" And we move forward once we do. I verify that we have the money appropriated before we do it. Just like that three thousand um, dollar catch basin, I we've got the money in there to fix that storm catch basin and we're doing it. So I will, I actually have not emailed him back. I was going to do it today um, to come do that. But again, that's going to be pretty much a purchase order. I mean, she's going to know that that bill is coming and it will already have, you know, the money set aside to do that. So, but yes, that's an everyday process that I bear. I tell her or Eric goes and tells her Brian goes in and if Brian needs a piece of equipment, he does a purchase order before he goes and uses the credit card. If it's $200, doesn't matter. He will, if it's $5 for a bolt, we don't do it, but anything, I believe we've kind of got it set, like anything over a hundred dollars, even for maintenance. Um, if he's going to buy a piece of equipment, he comes to me, he fills out a purchase order. I sign it and I give it to Leah. That's, that is how it works. Yeah. So that follows, that follows the process is yes. money's appropriated by council into line item for spending. And it's specific to that subject matter. So green space stuff can only spend on green space. Council can always make very specific categories in your budget, right? So, you know, you can you can do it just for a particular item, right? I mean, you can say, hey, Eric, this is for the GIS server for next year from, you know, Dell, and this is the one that we approved and get this one, this model, right? That's it. So same thing with the cruisers. So 
So it can be, or, or you, you give your staff more leeway to make determinations on the fly between, because when you approve budgets, things change in five or six months when the project gets you know going. So it, it, it's all dependent and policy typically guides that. So I think going back to Brian's comment, that's very typical. You know, there are plenty of good examples out there that can be brought to, to you in regards to how different policies in different municipalities work and people have already, you know, spun their wheels in making those policies so you can pick and choose as to which ones you like. Oh, sounds good. Thank you, Brian. All right. Anything else from uh, uh, Mayor or, or, or Mr. Fisher? I'm good, sir. Basketball Hughes. Fixed. What was that? Basketball hoop was fixed. Yeah, yeah, I know. People been out there playing. How's it been going? It's fine. Yeah. It, it yeah, still hasn't. Has really as busy as last year, I think, because there are more other parks open. I've I've yet to see really people waiting to play. I've, I've mostly it's only half the court that's being used at a given time. And Brian, you see it more than I do, but yeah, I don't even I don't even I know I have not seen a full court game played yet. So it's it's pretty same. Yeah, it's very sane. I think last year it got nuts because we were the only basketball court right around. Yeah, Mark. Real quick on that, because I know we had another trash can. I'm sure other people will figure this out, but I'll put it out there in case they don't. Put the new trash can that we're putting down there next to the picnic table, because that's where people sit and eat their fruit cups and whatnot. We have a new. We have one more that's going to go there. Yeah, um, I think I, someone else did it, but I wanted to make sure I said it. Yes, we. Um, I think we talked about it at planning and zoning. So yes, we put the picnic table over there. Um, we have moved two picnic tables over to the pond on Black Sycamore. Is that mm -hmm. the high one? The high, okay. So we have two picnic tables that we have now moved over to there. We now have the one at the basketball court um, and we will get the trash can over there. And then we're gonna get some additional trash cans for over by the Black Sycamore Pond. Nice. Yep. As I say, I figured that was probably apparent to other people, but it's just in case. It's in, it, we actually do have the one that goes to the basketball court. It is in the garage. So, but we'll get some over by the other um, picnic tables as well. I have just something very brief. Um, is the dam still open to the lake? Because the level has remained constant for some time and we're, you know, not able to do a lake cleanup without having it, you know, a shoreline. Okay. I hope to be able to go over there this weekend and see if it's open all the way. I don't know what what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems like it hasn't lowered at all. No, it hasn't. And There's water coming out, but I I I'm I have a feeling something's blocking some somewhere. Yeah, that's that is our or my suspicion as well. Here. I don't do anything around here, but I'll go out there and check on the lake drain mm -hmm. again. Well, I greatly appreciate you for doing that. That's, I, I am very appreciative for that. And once we get a lake cleanup going, the residents of the village will be appreciative for it as well. I should right. be able to do that this weekend. Very good. Any, any other items for today? <laughs> oh. Is everybody else done? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Go ahead, Tony. What's What's well, next? Talk about the fence, the fence application. You know, uh, <laughs> I guess Jesse, I'm I'm trying to understand when you got involved in this. Sure. Okay. First off, Jesse, I don't know, and Eric, I know is on here too. Um, I know that there has not been, and the anybody has done anything. So I don't know that this is. I'm not trying to cut this conversation off, but I also don't know that this is a conversation that we should be having. Well, there is an update, and, and I'll let. Yeah, there's maybe more in general, but maybe not specific to this exact event. If this ends yeah. up going to a court thing, sure. we'll sure. let Jesse sure. handle this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I spoke with counsel for the party who is unhappy with the fence permit, so the non-permit holder. Uh, yesterday, they filed their uh, he filed his appeal form. Uh, so we, you know, it's it is booked now. Now we're just going to work towards a date that works for both him, uh, that family, and then also the permit holder their attorney and everything. So they have filed the appeal, the appeal timely. Uh, they can certainly withdraw it if they want, but uh, we'll just work on setting up a date at some point, probably in August, by the time we get everybody on one, on one schedule. Uh, and we'll just do that. We'll plan to do that 
um, either before or after uh, a council meeting. So we're all in one place. Uh, very generally, and, and I do agree with the mayor, we, you know, these things happen all the time, uh, all over the place. The important thing is that to, to reserve judgment until we're on the record under oath, listening to witnesses and hearing evidence presented. Uh, I got uh, involved after we issued the permit. Uh, uh, Eric called me and said that, you know, we had, you know, some pushback on that from a, from a resident. Uh, and that's what triggered this process. You know, I looked at our code. Uh, and if anything, uh, the whole situation has given us a good reason to, to clarify the code. Uh, that's why we're, we have second reading allowing you guys to, to do the hearing. Ultimately, under the revised code, you delegate that authority if you want. So a city council or a village council holds that power. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the village council, you know, giving power to a board of zoning appeals. But at bottom, it is your power. So we're going to hold the have the appeal in front of council, which is perfectly fine, perfectly in keeping with the revised code. Uh, you're going to review to, to determine if a uh, the decision to issue the fence permit was unlawful or illegal. Uh, and that'll be that. We'll hear evidence, they'll call witnesses, and they'll make a decision. And either way, if they want, they can appeal it uh, under revised code chapter 2506 to the Franklin County Court of Common Police. That's really where we're at on it. Uh, I wouldn't want to get into any specifics until we're on the record and under oath so that we can build a good record uh, if either party decides they want to appeal after, after your decision. That was my perspective as well. I, I guess I kind of wanted to know as little about this as possible on a personal level until it happens. Because I it, am I correct in the perception that we're to more or less act as a jury, more or less, or an adjudicating panel? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. The, the term they use is that you're essentially sitting in a, a quasi-judicial role. Uh, and so you're just reviewing the permit, reviewing the, the case brought by both the permit holder uh, and the party who doesn't want the permit issued. And then you make a decision based on what what information is brought to you. Okay, thank you. That 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 was my impression. I, I'm okay. You know, so do we need to go into executive session to talk about the details of this matter? I mean, so we really we, we really can't. Uh, you know, there, there's not an executive session um, exception uh, for this type of appeal. It's just generally, it. I mean, I, I will say that. I know we haven't had many here, uh, but it is a pretty common, pretty common uh, process that, that plays out around cities and villages that we've worked in. Uh, and there's, there's, you know, really nothing to say that the permit holder can bring their case, the, the party who doesn't want the permit issue brings their case, and then we make the make the decision at that time, all on one record, and then we issue a written finding of, of what you all determined. And that's sort of the basis for any further appeal. Well, <laughs> So, so here's, here, here, here are some things that I have seen in this process that I think we, we can talk about because it's not the details of the case uh, or the, the situation at hand and speaks to the, uh, the process, right? Every, everybody's role in this permitting process, right? So in a, in a situation, I want a fence. I submit a, a, an application for a permit to the village, right? It is administratively approved or denied based on the merits of the application, right? And it, we are delegating that to the code enforcement officer at this time. Is that right? Or is it who is the person administratively? The yeah. So, so technically it's, to, it's delegated to the mayor. She delegates to her agents, which are, you know, primarily the code enforcement officer. And obviously in certain cases, I'll be involved like single house and you know, approvals, things like that. Yeah. But, but we all so work in, the administrative. In, 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 in general, it is the, you know, it is the, with the authority of the mayor, but at this time it is our code enforcement officer who is the one reviewing the permit and, and making the recommendation approved to the mayor or just approving it, right? At that time, now you have two flows, right? If we deny it, the person has the right to request a variance, right? Because it's not within, it was reviewed, determined not within the, the parameters of our code. 
and they can request a variance on that. And that comes to council to decide where, again, we are acting as a, or I think it goes to planning and zoning who makes a recommendation to council Correct. to, to uh, approve or not approve a variance. So in that council is acting as a uh, quasi adjudicative body. In the other stream, when we approve it, if my neighbor says that fence is infringing upon my rights in some way, they can appeal it. And at that time, again, council comes in as an as a adjudicative body, right? But where council doesn't come into is determining whether or not we should approve a permit. Correct. That is correct. That would be far below what your and, role is. Right. And I and I think that what I am hearing from Councilperson Benedetti is that he wants to talk about whether or not permit a permit should be should have been issued, and that is not within the purview of council. I, I agree right. completely. What I'm talking about is where do we move forward from this? At what point do we start talking about how our code is being interpreted and how it is being enforced? That that's the direction I want to go. And uh, you know, now I, you know, you know, and. Uh, what I'm trying to understand is when will council be given some advice as to whether in this pr appeal process as to whether their uh, opinions or assertions are correct? You know, do we get any, you know, like we say, well, is this what they're bringing up? Is this make sense? Is this legal? You know? Sure. Oh, sure. No, that, that's totally fair. And, and to your first point, it, it's certainly up to you guys, and we can move forward on doing some code amendments, which I think are probably very sorely needed to, to sort all this out and, and clarify it moving forward. And I feel comfortable about where we're at on, on the particular situation. Uh, but essentially, it is on the permit holder and the person opposing that permit to bring their arguments about, you know, I know that there was some things brought up about the driveway width. I don't want to get into that now. That's to be brought up at the hearing. You as council always have that authority to, if you find it necessary, grant a variance to that uh, provision if you find it applicable. Uh, what I'm trying to say is when we hear this, we don't have any, I don't have any of the evidence in front of me to know how wide certain things are or anything. So we have to go with what our employees say. The employee granted the permit. We move forward with that with an open ear to someone who has a problem with it. And it's on them to convince you all that that is applicable or not. Well, again, I, uh, I don't know. So why don't we go through the process and then I think it'll be, because this is your guys' this is the first time in my five plus years here that we've gone through this process. When I was in Powell, it was a constant thing, big ones, small ones, and, and they're a little more litigious out there. So, so it was an interesting experience. Um, but it's common. It, sometimes you find ways to clarify the code, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. The code is the code, right? It's what it's what the council and the community want. Uh, someone just has doesn't like it, right? And doesn't like that the property owner that's you know doing what they're doing has the right to do it, and it is what it is at the end of the day. I guess what I'm taking away from this is that I can't. Re I really shouldn't say anything until this is done because. <laughs> You know, this is, I, I guess I'm, I'm struggling with the fact that I've, I'm familiar with the situation and the circumstances, and I think that we've, it could have been done differently. We'll and have a chance probably, to see uh, all that's that. That's the underlying, my underlying angst with this issue is that we could have put a stop work order on this before this has got, it's getting, you know, now the fence is up. So we're, we're talking too much about more it. More and more difficult so, as we go. And I mean, first of all, let me say I certainly understand the, the desire to clarify it all, uh, and I think you'll have every opportunity to say that. I just want it all done in one place and on one record. Uh, as far as stop work orders and everything, we typically take the view everywhere I've ever seen it done is that once you have received a permit, you have rights to move forward on that permit, with the caveat that you are told that there could be an appeal and that you're sort of proceeding at your own risk. That was done here. Feel comfortable with the process. People made decisions maybe, but that's on them. And now we can all get this together in one place on one record, issue a written finding and see where it goes from there. 
So there's no like um, function of, uh, I guess you'd call it an, probably an injunction in the legal sense. We don't have that kind of a thing. No, we would Not only that do I'm... that if someone was doing something illegally that we gave them no permit for, or there was a nuisance violation of some kind where they're impacting their neighbors illegally. This is a completely legal process. And the issue okay. in this case is simply, you know, in any of these cases, I should say, is that one party disagrees with our finding and that's fine. They have a due process right. Yeah, I, I had no no in no intent on assuming anything was done illegally. I was just tr attempting to clarify, as again, as you said, absolutely, this is the first time our our batch of people are dealing with it. And that, yeah, and that's that's no problem. I just tell you that that's very common. I, I cover several other board of zoning appeals, and every one of those comes with, even with an approval, it says uh, you are proceeding at your own risk until the appeals period has run. Uh, in our code, it's 20 days, and they, you know, they made their appeal within 20 days. So everybody here knew above board what was going on and proceeded with their own risk. And we'll have the hearing and find out what you guys think. How, how do we go about verifying that they're aware of this? People to put up a fence. You can ask her under oath. You have to ask the attorney, right? Yep. But there's yep, not absolutely. Uh, there's no documentation that they're aware that moving forward with the fence that. It Are was they, at their risk. When were they notified? How were they notified that there's an appeal? They were they were notified. Uh, well, the people who called obviously were notified of their right to appeal, right? And then the permit holder was immediately notified that that she, in this particular case that she she could proceed, but it was at her risk. It, you know, we generally recommend that the work would stop until you know. It, it, but again. That's her money. She can move forward with a legal with her legal. How would is she verbally notified, or is this in an email? No, I, I had a I had a direct conversation with her. So and so again, so you're welcome to ask her under oath. It's a verbal thing. That's what I'm getting at. You ver you have a verbal understanding. Uh, is that correct? It was a ver yeah. She was notified, just like I notified the other party on the phone that they could appeal. Okay. Again, it's a verbal notification. I'm not sure what you're getting at. <laughs> he's just making. He's, he's, he says, "Yeah, okay." Yeah, I, I feel he's asking, "Is is there is there a document that we could look at to confirm?" I would have that? to look back to see if there was a direct email sent, but I I have a distinct recollection that I spoke yeah. directly to both parties in the beginning, so you know, it, notice was given. Okay. That's all I'm sure. Doing. All right, all right, Tony. What else do you got? I'm done. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got anything? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Councilperson Berger. The side thing. So with the uh, because yeah, I'm interested in this a little bit, so I have to ask a quick question. So let's say we were talking about, you know, when the village would ever tell someone, oh, you have to stop even though we gave a permit. So if I, you know, got all the permit I needed to put a pool in my backyard without telling my neighbor, oh, by the way, we're going to put a 20-foot backhoe through your backyard to dig out the hole that may or might tear up. Could we then say like, whoa, 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 you're permitted, but you can't destroy their yard. You have to- No, no, that, that's a whole different situation. So you can't trespass, you can't trespass yeah. with a backhoe. You've got to be able to get it back there or get permission from, or have an easement to work within, right? So there, there's, okay. there's legal issues you have to deal with there. there thinking, you know, what, under what property. circumstances could we look at a permit and say, oh, we gave that to you, but hold on. It, it, that okay. would be one of them. Yeah, that, they, they, they definitively can't. We do not tell people they can trespass on someone else's property. If they do that, that becomes a civil and potentially criminal matter. Okay. That, that was it. It was just a little thought experiment there. Nothing, nothing big. Very good. All right. Anyone else have any other uh, items for this morning's discussion? Right. Yeah, we're supposed to, if we're ready to wrap up, before we wrap up, we want to talk about what uh, everyone wants to make sure gets in the mayor's report for the newsletter. So um, let's see, I, I pulled up the uh, July newsletter. Uh, we had um, uh, the mayor mentioned that council meetings are back in person. I, I was thinking that maybe uh, that should be called out in a little box rather than, than just a sentence there. Sure. Uh, playground mulch has been delivered, um, so that's a one and a, one and done, I think. Mm -hmm. um, looking for additional information about the new facility that can be found. Blah, we we already talked about. We're hoping to get that extra page in there so we can do a blowout on the facility. Um, 
So uh, we'll do that. And what I can do is you, just if you all, you need to, it's a timed process. So next week I'll, assuming the mayor is also in agreement, uh, I'll, I'll work on that and uh, circulate it around uh, since it's a little bit more in-depth article about where we are with facilities. You can give me your feedback, but you gotta be around to give me your feedback. You gotta wa watch for it because uh, we're on a schedule to, to get the newsletter out. So um, what it, about additional Westerville City Schools? But find an update here. Um, that's that's uh, generally, I think that's been put in here a couple of different times. Uh, any other thoughts on on the school the progress of schools? Uh, they're moving along, obviously in the elementary, which I would assume here shortly, we should be seeing something to come back through. Well, we should be seeing plans at some point for the middle school, um, and then additionally, there'll probably be plans for um, the addition of their middle school football and track that's going to go behind the current Hawthorne. So I know that's on the books here some some point too, but that's it. When would they, is there a time uh, during the next 30 days where uh, someone walking by would see activity at the next to Hawthorne? No, because I, I no ma'am, I there's nothing, I don't think they're going to be breaking ground or anything in 30 days. I'm just, I, I know something is due to come in. So I'll, we'll figure that out. I'll let you know if that's changed okay. suddenly. Okay. All right, <clears throat> and planning and zoning is currently discussing shelter for picnics and gatherings um, and planning green space. Um, the theater. I would, I would uh, put in that where they're doing this at and let residents know exactly where we're talking about putting a pavilion. And who would have that detail? Mayor, do you have the detail or should I contact someone else for that? Well, it's going to be right across from the, well, I don't know how to describe it. Right across from the basketball court. I Other side of the street. The yep. roads there. Right. Behind the playground. Yeah. Behind the playground. Okay. In and that. You, and uh, so this is something that um, is within the confines of the next newsletter period of time. Will anyone see activity there? Will there actually be construction during the in, in August? I highly doubt it. Um, number one, I think that that's where MPCA is planning on having the block party. But I do not anticipate being able to have concrete down, a structure built, and all of the above. Um, Eric, this is outside of this, but I did contact, um, they want like $50,000 for a 20 by 40. Um, so that place was drastically higher than the other ones um, that that's I with talked a pool. to. Sorry to have the discussion online, but that's with a full install or no? No, that's oh, delivering we'll, it. We'll have to talk yeah. a little more. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so we're we're still in the midst of looking at um, designs, pricing, all of that. So to think that this could be August, September, absolutely not. I, okay. I, I would love to say that, but no. I mean, getting concrete down and then getting the, the I would say this is pro as much as I would, you guys know me, I would love to have this done before the end of the year. I think it's probably going to be more of a spring. I would love to be, you know, whether or not, again, I know the money's been appropriated and all of that, um, whether or not this is something we bring back to you guys, if it's a, con you know, whatever, um, especially this type of money, we'll discuss, you know, how we want to handle that after the finance meeting, Brian, what, you know, what I need to come to you guys for, what we don't, um, but this would be something that hopefully have it in con i'm going to use my words contract to be built in early spring like if it was being delivered or whatever that would be this ideal is a great a great example getting a cart in front of the horse not that this is going to happen but planning and zoning is making recommendation to council to do this this doesn't mean we're doing it yet because council hasn't decided that we want to do this tony the money's been appropriated to i get that i get that Okay, whatever, whatever description, I think it's important to let the residents know that this is the direction we're heading, this is where it's at, and nothing's for sure yet. That's the way I would describe it. You know, just because plain, I know, here's your, here you go saying, the money's been appropriated, I can spend it if I want to. And I get that, I get that. But what's being taken out of this again 
is the council's involvement. And right now, this has only been decided by planning and zoning. You know, so. <laughs> Go ahead. Guys, I have to get going to bed. I, I work again. I work yeah. again tonight, but I will. I appreciate. I'll, Diane, I'll send you a message. Okay. Bye, David. Thank you. Not a problem, guys. Tony, I, I think I think part of the issue that I'm having is I, I'm, I can't decipher between when you want me to email you every single time I spend X. I, 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 I think that's what I'm having a hard time with. So like if I'm doing a sewer repair for three thousand dollars versus this. About. You're, you're, see, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. I'm no, not concerned no, about Not in the last that. few days, Tony. I mean, some of the emails that I've received from you, and we're not getting into that right now. It doesn't matter what. I, I'm trying to decide, trying to figure out exactly what you're expecting me to do. I, I think well, you're the only one I that I seem to continually have this issue with. Is that we haven't told anybody in the res in the village that we're going to put a, a pavilion on this corner. You know, I don't. I mean, maybe there's a few people that know that, and the ones that watch all of it, all the okay. meetings and everything. But what so, I'm so saying, do we just need a flyer that, to go out to every resident or postcard? I mean, what no, would we, we, we need? Proper we need to put something in the newsletter. Okay, and, and and again, Tony, we did a lily pond with the one. We made the decision. We moved forward. You know, this is. I, I, so okay, but that wait a minute. Great. Uh, a lily pond and a and a pavilion are two totally different things. I mean, a lily pond. In your be, opinion, but when it oh, comes yeah, the li thing. lily. If we decide uh, next year a lily pond is no good, we could rip it all out, and what have we spent? So, whereas a pavilion, that, that is something we're pouring concrete. I mean, that's a permanent structure. I think there's a little You're bit right. of difference there. That just a little bit of a difference uh, in terms of that. But uh, I I I I think we. Uh, I think I'm confused too, but I I thought that I know that that there there's there's money in the fund and picnic tables and all that are being bought and all that jazz and that's I guess that's the purview uh, administration, but but a pavilion um, at one point it seemed like I'm just trying to this is trying to process this right now, but it just seems like that. A permanent structure like that. When exactly? When exactly would? Because I heard the I heard the, the the statement also that planning and zoning uh, makes recommendations to council. Is in what circumstances does planning and zoning make recommendations to council? Because the last time we had that landscape architect and all that. That, that came through council and then that was debated and only a small piece was approved. But right. if that situation happened, if so, that situation happened again today, no, so, uh, so you Diane, let me, let me change answer our mind about that? So, so real quick, I'll just give a quick example. So any time, so in that case, that was non-appropriated money that had to come back to council, you know, for your approval. And then there's a contract involved with it, but also needs your approval. Now, in the case where, you know, again, getting back to the not a $3,000 rule, but more financial policy, depending on what the, you know, council allocates money, appropriates the money for particular uses. Now, whether okay. it comes back to you it is a matter of both legislation and policy. Now, right now, that's going to be further discussed. And, you know, but in general, if there's something that, let's say, council has appropriated all that money for use in the green spaces. Okay, what defines that? Is it defined? So right now, there's a wide open area of definition. What if the mayor decided, any administration decided to spend 10000 on trees? That would all be already appropriated money. She just has to write a PO out, and we start getting going on the trees, right? So that's that's how that works, um, you know, just from a technical standpoint. But we it, did not, but, but wait a minute, but, but the Parkland Fund is, if you're talking about the Parkland Fund, which is the fund that uh, we got because of the the, the MI. residents of MI uh, pulling that money, obviously the, the uh, council did not allocate, allocate those funds. You those did. Funds. You, did. you did. We you did. All been appropriated. We did. Yeah. All been appropriated. And the mayor can do whatever that she you. wants. The mayor can do whatever she wants. She doesn't need to okay. ask for approval. Within, within policy, right? So okay. she has to follow the bid or anything like that, but yes. The odds of this being under bid limit is going to be slim and none. 
So again, this is this is pretty much a mute point, and I think Brian's trying to say something. So yeah. the moral of the story is whether or not we come back or need to, the odds are we all already know that this is likely going to be over a bid limit. So we're having a conversation about something that doesn't matter. The issue for me is, you know, every other day, I just feel like I, 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 I do something. And if it's not something I, that somebody likes, you know, like the carriage rides, then they have an issue with it. But yet it's the exact same thing when we're doing a sewer repair for $3,000. So you know, that's okay if I do this, but it's not okay. But the same money's been appropriated. So it's I'm just kidding. It's not the same. It is the same. No, it isn't. I appropriated money for a certain yeah. thing. Council appropriated the money and the mayor fills out her DO and spends it. She's the administrator. Making so that works again, you have to set, if we're getting back to Brian, we got to set policies. Okay. In so policies. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so where uh, I, I feel like the, the step in all this that we have waved our hands in, is that council always gets a say on the contract, right? right. Council council gets to Correct. gets to adjudicate whether or not the mayor is allowed to enter into a contract, and things like uh, building shelters. You know, so much of any major spending is always going to have a contract. I it would feel really weird to just buy ten thousand dollars worth of trees without some sort of contract around delivery or whatnot. Maybe you can figure that one out, but I, I don't I don't know. But yeah, that's that's where that's where the guardrails are is in contracting. So if there's no contract, Correct. so as long as there's a contract, then she has to get approval. But for anything that doesn't have a contract, she can the mayor can spend whatever she wants. Up to, as, up to the policy as, limits, yep. as it sits right now, by by the policies that we have in place, yes. Yeah, uh, the council has a say on things. A lot of that say is when we make the budget. And if we put $10,000 into community events, that money has been appropriated, it is there, and then it is up to the administration to decide which community events to spend it on. If we put $100,000 in a parks and green space maintenance and construction fund, we have said you are okay to spend $100,000 on parks. And that is, at, I mean, that's, that's the way. I understand you don't like it, Tony, but that's, that's the actual mechanism. That's what it is. I, um, I complete. I'm just, I'm trying to understand where the difference, you know, because... <laughs> And I will just say real quick, as far as that pavilion goes, planning and zoning knows they were going to need approval from it. Um, and we all filled out, or at least I know, uh, perhaps earlier this year, late last year, a survey where planning and zoning had 10 proposed things like, you know, a park here or a pavilion there. And what are you as council likely to approve? I believe Pavilion was pretty high on everyone's list as something we would be likely to approve. Correct. So I can see why they're going forward on that, already having asked. Whereas, you know, like the amphitheater, I think we kind of agreed, like, well, let's maybe do a small thing to keep it from crumbling, but we're not sure we want to spend our money to build tiers into the side of the hill. And I know we can't do that because it's a dam, but, you know, to run electric and put an equipment shed out there, maybe keep it from crumbling, and then we'll see if we do something in the future. But those discussions were already had, I guess is my. I opinion. agree. I remember them, and but you know, we're now we're getting down to specifics. And now, and now let's wind all this back to where this started. Okay. What is the appropriate communication for the newsletter? I think the appropriate communication regarding a potential shelter is something along the lines of. Planning and zoning is considering a, uh, a shelter of some type in the parkland space at the corner of Alder Vista and Quiet Brook Vale. And that's the whole statement. I would, I would, I would say instead of a some type, I would say a, a concrete floor open air shelter that could seat, you know, four picnic tables, because that's what I believe they're discussing. Six that's, to eight you know, picnic tables. How many? Six to six, eight. Six to eight, yeah. I mean, we, we know, we, instead of saying some type, we kind of know what they're planning and what, what square footage they want. So, I didn't, so. Well, you <laughs> weren't at the meeting that I was at. 
I wasn't. Remember the meeting at the basketball court? I said, yeah. oh, that's close. I might walk down. <laughs> So, then, okay, so, you know, I agree with what Mark's saying about a little more detail, concrete floor, open air, shelter, the six to eight tables might be a little more if, if you don't uh, talk about the size of the tables, because if you think about park tables in, in, the, in uh, park shelters are usually, those tables tend to be a little bit bigger when they're in the shelter, but uh, so that might be hard for people to Visualize it might sound like it's bigger. Huh? And a little line in it, like, you know, like all the metro parks have next to the playgrounds. One of those people mm -hmm. yeah. are looking for. And I, I think it's a good idea to, to get to set an, uh, uh, an expectation saying probably or um, look for this probably most likely in the spring, uh, spring 2022. I think that. That makes sense, especially with you know everything being so hard to 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 do this year with all the building problems and all that. Okay, so okay, we got that. Um, uh, let's see. The only other thing that was in the last report was just a a, a shout out to the the zoning officer. Um, do we? Uh, what else do we want to have in there? Uh, we want to. What's the date that we're expecting this to be delivered? Well, we're, we always hope that it'll be the first. So okay. then, then I think one more call out for four open council seats is, is appropriate. So could we get with MPCA, and this is just a question since we are early in July, um, just because we do have we do have that and I would love to put a little blurb for national night out again not a big thing just like don't forget national night out the third I think it's the third well it's it the is third the, I'm looking uh, at the, yeah so if there would be any way to get them to like mail it out the 30th or the 30 like I that Friday the post office won't uh guarantee anything I know so that is where we get we just yeah. have to call so, but if we could have it ready to go, you know, with Innskeep mm -hmm. and get it there a few days, like if we were planning, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Got it. See if we, we'll if there's any way we can. Best we can. Yeah. yeah. They've been good so far. I, I, I know what to tell you. They've been really uh, pretty, pretty uh, right on. So, yeah. um, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. National Nine Out. What, what else? Um, I, I'd like to see something about the, uh, the license plate readers being discussed and uh, to let everybody know that they're not going to be allowed to get into the opt-out program. <laughs> um, so, so that, so Tony, to me, that sounds like a safety committee. I uh, decided that it's, I'm fine with whatever the police recommend. Okay. Right. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that that article is pretty expressly safety committee unless you're asking for Chief Delp to write that article, right? That's that's more than a one sentence thing. That sounds like a whole article. So I don't I don't have any problem with who writes it. <laughs> All right, well, then. It, it would be you that wrote, that wrote. I don't think it's anybody's place to write it. I think if it's a safety committee, what we're getting at is if you want to submit a safety report, write a safety report. If somebody wants a community report like David does, he submits a safety. I don't think it's Diane's place to be writing safety committee reports. No. So yes, well, the, the, I think the follow-up the follow-up might be, if I may, Tony, that that also might be appropriate coming from Chief Delp. Chief Delp could, if it's within you know what is asked of him, write a brief article. The village has deployed to license plate reading cameras. Here is what they do, here is how we intend to use them. And here is, you know, any information regarding opt out. There you go. I, because now, I'm, I'm not an expert in this. Chief's the one that's decided that he's the one that wanted to do this, and he's the one that's decided. Wait, Tony. Uh, Tony, I, that I is. Hold on, hold on, Matthews, if I may. Tony, that is a disingenuous statement, right? The he present. Hold, Tony. I am going to finish this statement. Chief Delp came to us with an idea. He gave us the information, we discussed it, and the council approved moving forward with this. 
So mm-hmm. now to lay this off on Chief Delp is disingenuous, and I will not let you get away with it. I misspoke. I should have said it was Chief Delp that brought this to our, brought, that suggested that we did this. Okay. And that's an entirely different thing. And that is a very honest acceptance of what happened. Thank you. And just so you know, he actually brought it to me and I'm the one that asked him to bring it to you guys. So, because I did, I also agree. I believe it is a very important thing as well. So I'm, I'm just as much of the why we brought it to you. Do you think that, uh, Mayor, do you think that the uh, chief would have an opportunity to write that this week? Um, he is in a con- he is currently in a conference. He will be back on Wednesday. Uh, so I will find out on Wednesday. Okay. All right. Okay, what else? Um, we uh, let's see. Any other um, tidbit announcements for the mayor's report? Um, I have something but I don't remember what it was because what we do um, is we make a list of things as the month goes on. Um, for things that have either popped up on Facebook or, you know, again, you guys know I get emails um, through the website and different things like that. We get, um, as you guys know, people are dumping in the reserve areas. They are still dumping in the reserve areas. Like that's been a big issue. Um, did we have that in there last month again or no? No, we did not. So th- that might be one of the things that's on our list because it is an ongoing problem even as of three days ago um, that we, you know, we make sure that people understand. One of the other things that is a big talk, and, and again, the, the reason that a lot of administration does this is because, you know, a, until I can bring it to you guys, we have an issue with people parking um, three cars deep in the MI section. We've got some people complaining about the fact that they can't walk on the sidewalks over there. Um, so again, just a courtesy, like this is going out in the newsletter. We know it's the way that a lot of people get their information um, before we put the hammer down. I guess I'm going to say it in my terms, not you know, it, it's nice to give people a look. You guys have been warned, you know, you you know that you can't do this, but here's your warning again. And then we send out the code enforcement officer or the police or whatever. That's not how I want to spend our police time nor our code enforcement officer's time. So maybe people just need a friendly reminder. Hey, you cannot park over top of the sidewalk. Um, but that is a huge issue over there right now. Is, is that a, actually a... Well, so, so what it is, uh, and Jesse, feel free to jump in on this. What it is, it's a piece of ORC and the sidewalk falls in the public right away and you are you are blocking the pedestrian access at that point and pedestrians have first and foremost the right of way especially on the sidewalk and what it does it forces people strollers everything out into traffic on the street to go around that or they're forced to trespass the other way most people just go into the street and go around which is a problem yeah it's one of the things i love about uh not having sidewalks in this area of the thing is i can park cars to the edge of the street because there's no sidewalk I'm walking. Uh, real quick though, I actually have my hand up for a question on Tiffany. When you're saying they're dumping things, are uh, just curious what, I mean, are they, is this lawn clippings and prunings or is this Everything. like? Um, all of the above. We The big okay. issue that we had, um, grass clippings is big, but I mean, the problem is, is it's killing the grass that's under the grass. Yeah. Um, so lawn clippings has been the, the last couple, um, but we actually had contractors uh, doing a project that removed um, rolls of sod that had the rocks in ball, you know, rocks and concrete and all that kind of stuff in it and took those big, huge um, rolls and dumped them into a reserve. The other mm-hmm. one was a resident that decided to cut down very large tree limbs. I don't want to call it a tree, but I think they actually removed the entire tree and they were carrying it over to the reserve and dumping it into the reserve. So yeah. yes, it would. Um, but the moral of the story is if you, you know, the comment that I made last week is if you don't want it in your yard, don't put it in ours. Yeah. yeah. The, and, and, and the other one that's a big popular one is uh, fecal matter. Letting yes. your dogs just run and take dumps in our property and not cleaning it up. That's the, that's the third biggie. And that, that is an ongoing problem at at least two properties. A large problem. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I have my little stick pile on the back corner of my yard from when I mm-hmm. take sticks up to burn because uh, something will move in there. Give give possums or something a little place to burrow down. <laughs> I don't get those anymore now that I have a dog that runs around the backyard. Right. All right. Any anybody else have anything they want to call out for the newsletter? 
Uh, I think uh, we uh, uh, we could we have room for the uh, on the front page for uh, the next employee um, meet the employee, and I think that was supposed to be uh, Eric. It was, Eric but I, I, I talked, talked to the mayor. <laughs> yeah, we we talked about. We'll get that in there for the next month. Um, but again, I have some other stuff that I was already planning on doing for the newsletter. It's, it, I just don't have my list. Like I said, we make a list of the things okay. that need to go in there. I so like having the food trucks in there as well. Um, if we can make sure that those hit, I don't know what we have coming up. Um, but I will get with you this week. You, you guys. Okay. Up, uh, tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, they're coming okay. tomorrow. And they were uh, rated like number one food truck on the Columbus Dispatch list. It's taking me a year and yes. three months to get them to come to the village. Hmm. Not even kidding. So online order will be available tomorrow morning. Um, I will post it as soon as they send it to me, but it will be on Street Food Finder if you just want to go straight there. <coughs> Supposedly that will happen tomorrow morning. Um, I wish I could think of what the other things were that we wanted on there, but still I can't think of it. But So I will email you. Because I just had Jessica write some a couple things on it the other day. I just can't remember what it was. Okay. And so I think, so what we have for the big features, um, this is our quarterly big feature, will be uh, the facility and the reserve areas will be the two big things that we'll tackle in more detail. And if, and if the chief has the safety, if he wants to talk, he may have something else he wants to you know, he may be inspired after his, uh, you know, uh, conference to yeah, it's, uh, it's, write something else. And so we'll leave some room for him, a little more room for him, maybe on the additional. Yeah, he's at, um, he's at a chief's conference. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah, they do. It's nonstop events for him. Um, so yeah, very. Okay. It'd be really good. All right. Well, thank you all for your input. Anything else? Just email me. Please. Uh, I will add uh, just one thing as a positive note, as I am also, Diane, looking at last week's um, uh, letter from the archive there. Um, I do like the, the format and the way that the police activity is being done, where it's just kind of very simple, 11 incidents, three of them were this, two of them were that, citations, we did eight tickets, four of them speeding, two blah, 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 two, you know. Just a quick general, we don't need details of when and where. And I just wanted to say, I, I really like the way that's being done. Okay, yeah. great, great. So what we'll do, Diane, is I'll continue to have Leah just kind of send you the information and you just kind of plop it how you sure, see. Sure. And I, I wanted to make sure you knew that. Like, I don't care how you put it, whatever you guys feel comfortable with okay. um, putting those in there. And um, did get your email yesterday. I don't want to go too far in that because I know that was something you asked me about. Right. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna say it this way. It is a public record. That said, do we need it on there? No, um, maybe that's something that, I don't know if we wanna talk about that. I, I don't wanna really do it right here just because of, um, I know not everybody knows what we're talking about, but I did go back through and look to see the information that's in there. So I feel like one of them should, maybe we'll take that one out. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know that, uh, again, I know they're getting used to the reporting, but I think if the, if the uh description or the note or whatever yeah, that's yeah. called if that could just be removed from the reporting i i don't think that uh, right, right. yeah i don't yeah. think that's appropriate yeah, yeah. so okay. we can get that one i think the first one doesn't have as much information it was the second one that no, had it wasn't it was the second one yeah and so, the second one may not even be necessary maybe the first right. one's enough I think so too. Um, but I also think that it was like you said, we're just kind of tinkering around with what options we have, what reports we actually get. So um, what I'm going to do is I will have them remove that one from the packet. Um, no, you guys already have the packet. Okay. You guys already have it, but I'll have them remove that from the website packet. Um, yeah. uh, honestly, Barbel, if, if I send her a message and she's still around, she may go ahead and do it. But if not, I'll have her do it Monday. Okay. Um, it's still in your guys's packet. It's fine, but um, I will have her remove that from the website. And from here forward, we'll just do the list one, yeah. um, and then I'll have Leah just send you the basics of this is what it is, and then you decipher and do your chart the way that you okay. see fit that you okay. guys like it. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. It's nine fifty-five. Um, yeah. 
a 9.55. I am ready to call it unless anyone has one last late breaking urgent thing. Going once, going twice. Oh, whoa, whoa, just one. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Eric, could, Eric, had you uh, seen that there was some issues with flooding in someone's backyard uh, down by the new the elementary school? I don't think he's aware. He's not on our Facebook. Yeah, and so if, if somebody wants to email me that, we'll look into that. Um, we there, There's going to be, obviously, there's grading changes going on as we speak on that site. And so there may be some temporary things we can do to alleviate that if we, you know, and I'll, I'll let the construction people know that. So definitely send me, send me whatever that is, whose yard that is. That's most important. Um, the final plan, and, and both Mike and I had, had dealt with this long time ago when we, we were in front of plan review, we, we got their primary drainage stuff to exit out, you know, to, you know, toward away from all the residents towards that um, old railroad right of way. Um, so there should be no flooding. Now that said, that's what the finished grading plan implemented, right? So since we're not there yet, uh, I'll bring it to their attention and make sure they shore it up with some type of either grade change or some temporary barrier, you know, but I need to see what's going on. It's, it's in the last house on Minerva Lake Road on the south side. The one before the apartments? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's we'll, all. I just need to know that we're looking into that. Okay. Yeah. No, thank you for your attention. We'll, I'll get on them for it. Eric, write, uh, just write a note, and I, I know whose it is. Great, thank you. I move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor, aye. aye. Have a good weekend. Everybody be well.